Hello. Uh, today we're playing a game called The King's Tax. It's based on the classic probability game Greedy Pig, which I'm sure many people have played, but it's got a little bit of a twist. We're playing with cards instead of playing with dice. What this means is that the probabilities change. Um, they actually depend on the cards I've already played. So it involves some sort of card counting, which might be a skill that's useful later in life for some. The way it works is like this. Um, I can play this game entirely online. And that's the great thing about it. All I need is an online deck of cards, which conveniently you can find at deck of cards and an online whiteboard. Got some information over here that'll be useful uh, and I can keep score. Or I could just do this, jot this down on a piece of paper. What we need to do is we begin by shuffling the deck. You could play with as many players as you like online. The way it works is I will flip cards and each card I flip, I accumulate that dollar amount. If I flip a jack, it's worth $15, as you can see over here. If I flip a queen, it's worth double. And that means double whatever's in the bank for that round so far. So if I had $20 in the bank so far for that round, I'll double it to $40 and continue on. However, if I get a king, this is bad because the king collects the tax, which means it's the end of the round and all the money goes to the king and you get nothing. So you can drop out of the round whenever you want, much like in Greedy Pig. When you're playing online, the way of doing this is you keep your hand raised and then you put it down when you want to opt out and you collect your money for that round. If everyone opts out, you then start a new round, obviously keeping track of how many kings have gone as well as queens and jacks is a very useful thing to do. So let's begin pretending we're playing with Toby and my alter ego, Bob. First card is a seven. Okay, Toby and Bob will both keep their hand up. And the five, so you need to add these numbers as we go. Seven and five is 12. You might wanna show the numbers so people can keep track. Bob and Toby are still in it for the third card. Seven and five is 12, plus two more is 14. Everyone's still staying in it. 14 and nine is 23. Both players are still staying in. Oh, and the king has collected his tax. So for round one, unfortunately for Toby and for Bob, neither player scored. So we begin round two. Both players are backing with their hands up and you can play with the whole class or you could play with just two players. Two dollars are collected. Now the jack is worth 15, which is beautiful. Toby and Bob both collect another $15, which takes us to 17. We're both sticking around. We're gonna take the risk. Another seven to 24. Okay, we're gonna stay in there. 24 and seven is 31. Okay, Bob's gonna say, I'm gonna take my 31 bucks. I'm happy with that. It's a nice score for that round. And I'm out, which means there's no risk for him anymore. Toby's going to stay in on 31. But oh, he's got $4, takes it to 35. Uh-oh. He stayed in, got a king, king collected his tax, and Toby got zero for the second round. Game continues in this way until the end of the deck. Obviously, if you keep track of the number of kings in the game, then you have a sense of how likely it is to come up. Sorry, the game doesn't end at the end of the deck. It ends when all four kings have come up, and that'll be the end of that that game. You might want to play a second game with another deck of cards. And that's the game, the king's tax. Whoever has the most dollars at the end wins the game.